am a bit nervous and uh, super happy to, and excited to be here. Uh, one small disclaimer, the talk that uh, I uh, will be delivering in the next, I think, 30 minutes uh, was uh, designed for students who study business and entrepreneurship and uh, I was invited to kind of inspire them with some of my ups and downs, but also to share some uh, tips and tricks more on the soft side, not so much about tech. So this is very maybe unpopular topic. It's not gonna be about technology or anything. It's gonna be about you as a person, as an entrepreneur, as a founder, or just as an employee of a company or a young professional. So uh, before uh, starting, I want to give you the answer of, uh, of this question. So it's, it's not a solo sprint, then what it is, I think it's a team sport and it's a marathon uh, because you go from one thing to another thing to one thing to another thing and it's a never ending journey. So it's a curse in a, in a, in a way. Um, so I also didn't want to uh, make the talk to be only about me and what I've done. So I said, okay, I will give a different perspective and I'll talk about them, about my team members, about the people who were around me in my uh, journey but I will also talk about the marathon and I will try to uh, give you, some, as I said, uh, some tips and tricks. But first, I would love to know who is in the room. So normally I would ask each of you to uh, say her or his name and to in a few words, but now since we are way too many, so how many students are here? One, two, three, okay, cool. Uh, and how many entrepreneurs are here? Oh, nice, cool. And how many tech people are here? Okay, and the entrepreneurs are the pretty much the same people. Cool, cool, okay, nice. Uh, good. Uh, me, uh, I think uh, I consider myself to be a fool who wants to be an entrepreneur in a hostile world. And I am kind of obsessed by making a positive impact through tech-driven innovation in the public sector particularly in the public safety and security sector. So think of emergency responders like the police, firefighters, and uh, ambulance, and all of these organizations who are very big, very slow, very old, and they need to digitalize, and they will be disrupted in the next uh, five to 10 years because they are in their comfort zone. So my mission is to help this uh, organization through the, um, through the digitalization. And I also say that I'm a simple guy who uh, loves helping other entrepreneurs, students, whoever needs some kind of a brainstorming session or like with Tudor, we always uh, spar on ideas and things. So I really get pumped when I have the chance to talk to other people about entrepreneurship. And I'm also part of a few entrepreneurial societies, but also other things uh, where I can actually give what I have learned in my short journey. Um, so, as a founder, I think one of the biggest, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, gifts that you can have is to know why you do what you do. And also, to know how you add value to the other people. If you know these two things, and a few other more I will talk about later, I think you, you will be a great founder or a great entrepreneur. But, 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 but... Uh, let me walk you through uh, my entrepreneurial journey. So I will uh, talk about my junior school, my high school, my uh, university life, and then um, after that, and I will tell, tell you about my ventures and my, the things I've done. But I don't want to talk about me, so I'll talk about all of the people that have been with me or I have been with them and why we have done things and why we have failed things, because we failed so many times. Um, the first one was when I was a very young kid with this guy. We really wanted to buy a computer in the, uh, in the early 90s to play games because it was, yeah, it was cool. So our parents didn't have money. So what do we do? We work. And then we got a job as uh, delivery boys. We were doing some flyers and the post. And at some point, we, 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 we realized that we need to deliver so many and we couldn't deliver. So we were just asking for more and more for and more and more from the people who were giving us the flyers and we were throwing them. And at some point they realized that we were not doing our job. And uh, this is how our first uh, business uh, ended. But uh, we managed to buy the computers. We got our grandparents and Christmas and all the things. 
So we got the computers. And then around fifth, sixth grade, we were already with the computers and we wanted to make money so we can be cool and uh, do cool things and go to the, s to the seaside and I don't know what. So this guy, another classmate of mine, uh, and I, we had internet and computers. So we were like, okay, we'll burn, we'll download uh, games and movies, we'll pirate things. We didn't know it's illegal, we were kids, and it's okay, I mean. Um, and then uh, we were selling these things, so we made a little bit of money, but at some point everybody had internet and that business also died because everybody could download movies. Then I was in high school with my uh, classmates. Uh, we, uh, we found out that uh, there are these uh, football hooligans in, my, in our hometown and they really like these special brands of clothes and we were able to find these special brands of clothes in uh, secondhand shops. So we were like, okay, we can buy them, sell them to them. But what we also did very innovative was that we were using forums, existing forums and groups where people were uh, uploading uh, clothes and we were selling them online. So we had e-commerce shop. I realized that 10 years after that, that we were doing e-commerce when e-commerce was not sexy. And again, we were making some money, but we failed. Why? Because we were not customer oriented. We didn't care about the customers. We were just selling them the clothes and then we were disappearing. We were. So at some point we failed that business because we were not customer oriented, but also because the market was flooded with uh, replicas and other clothes from uh, Turkey or whatever not. And then I started, I was like, fuck, what shall I do? I need money. I got a job in McDonald's and then I worked there. And then after a few years, I was promoted to be young manager, blah, blah. But uh, I mean, working in McDonald's was uh, not the best thing to do. And this is where I learned that I don't want to work anymore. I don't, I don't want to have to work anymore. And I want to do something on my own. So with this dream, I was like, okay, I'll go in the Netherlands where that's like 10 years ago. I was 18 and I was like, I will do great things. Then we go there with these two guys. Uh, and then we started our first business, walking dogs. We will walk dogs. Nobody knows anything about dogs, so we failed that very quickly. Then we opened a business that was about uh, gardening. Nobody knows anything about gardening. Nobody knows uh, anything about business, how to do business in the Netherlands. We failed that miserably. Anyway, we learned a lot of lessons. We learned how things work. And then I started helping these guys, this lady and this guy, uh, with their restaurant. And then we partner up. And then we made a nice uh, Greek place. We were successful. But we fuck it up. Why? Because they got divorced. And this is when I learned that you need to have a very good uh, shareholder agreement when you start your uh, company and uh, to know what you will do in the worst situations and the best situations and, and so on and so on. And then I managed to graduate, finish school, and then I didn't want to get a job. My mom told me, uh, I have one advice, please don't get a job. And I was like, yes, okay, cool. My dad was completely crazy. He's still crazy. I don't care. And then I was almost done or done, I don't remember. And then my neighbor asked me to help these guys, this, uh, this guy, that guy, and that guy, because they were so starting a new software outsourcing agency in Chernivtsi, around the corner in Ukraine. And then they needed someone to do business development and sales in the Netherlands to close deals, chase customers, hunt customers, farm customers, and so on. I had no idea about sales, business development, or anything, anything, anything. But I said yes, and then uh, we got the first project. And then uh, they were sending me these pictures in an apartment. And then uh, the year after, we were like, I don't know, 15 people. Then we were 35 people. That's me. And then now we have a fancy office, a couple of girls. <laughs> we have diversity for the sake of diversity. But in the meanwhile, uh, I was also, okay, I do that. I have also a consulting job as an uh, information security consultant, but it was not enough. I wanted to do more things. I was like, I, I can do more. So I was like, I have this great idea about building this great solution, but I don't, have, I don't know how, I don't know anyone. I, I have no idea. So I go to this uh, uh, event. It's called uh, Odyssey. It's uh, the world's largest blockchain in a hackathon. And I meet this guy and that guy, and they're like students, last year students. And they're like, uh, we don't have an idea, but we have a team. 
And I said, great, I have an idea, but don't have a team. Let's do it. And then we joined the hackathon. And surprisingly, as you can see, my co-founder still can't believe that we won second place there. And this is how I started my first uh, startup, tech startup, blockchain. Yeah, save the world. Um, as I said, we do business with police and uh, other people. And then the media, it was super, um, uh, how do you say, uh, pink and everybody was happy. We raised money. Uh, we got uh, invited to join an uh, incubator. Uh, the old uh, people were uh, talking about us, you know, the, 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 the fancy entrepreneurs were also talking about us. But it was really, really hard for us because we didn't know what, what we were doing, basically. And then we continued hacking with more people and having more fun. But at some point, things didn't go well. We were not really, the startup is not that, but we are uh, in a, let's say, in a dip. And then, yeah, we did more. And then everybody was super hyped. And uh, we did uh, design sprints and uh, all the things that uh, Tudor knows about. And uh, they're very good. And I would highly advise you to do them if you have startup, because they will save a lot of hustle. And then it was April last year. And we were like, OK, we have a better idea. And we joined, again, the world largest blockchain and AI hackathon. And we joined the hackathon with uh, almost the same team. And then, guess what? We won again. And then I, I entered um, uh, Yes Delft, which is a tech incubator in the Netherlands, to incubate and validate the project. And the project is about, uh, it's called Ada, it's Artificial Intelligence Disaster Advisor. And I was uh, doing shifts with firefighters to validate my assumptions, and so on and so on. So it was super funny, super cool. But then again, I hit the wall because I had to convince corporates to give us money and da 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 da. So it was not, it's still not uh, as it uh, fluffy and pinky as it looks from outside. So why I'm telling you these kind of things? Oh yeah, okay, the media again. Um, why I'm saying that? Uh, because many people think that entrepreneurship is uh, all about tech and blah, blah. And, but it's also about you as a person and also about that most of the time you will not gonna feel good because it's not always the way you want it to be. I mean, in life, if you have a job, you also do that. But I think it's, that's, I mean, here it's female entrepreneurs. I think it's also okay if we do it for males. Let's uh, don't uh, exclude people. Um, but I think it's like always ups and downs and these dips. And as you can see, if you go down, that's intensive and that's, you need to know how to basically balance yourself and how to keep yourself uh, yeah, in, the, in, in, in a good shape so you don't burn out or fuck up or give up or everything because it's not easy. And then I think it's very important, this is the bottom line, is that founders, entrepreneurs cannot survive these dips if they're not intrinsically motivated. So I'll be talking about motivation and um, vision, mission, uh, and other personal things that uh, many, many, many incubators, accelerators, entrepreneurs just simply don't uh, pay. They don't uh, give enough attention, but they are really important, in my opinion. So as you can see, this kid, I mean, he's like happy, 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 and then he almost uh, yeah, dies. So I think this is the life of the entrepreneurs. So the entrepreneurs, do you recognize that or not? Yeah? OK. Validation, good. So, yeah, just a framework. Um, yeah, I mean, we're so always, we, when we start, we're happy and excited. And when we start hitting the wall, our optimism uh, goes down. And if we're not really centered and focused, I think many people give up on their uh, startups because of team, because of lack of investment or whatever, but sometimes because they are, uh, uh, they are afraid, they are uncertain, because they are de depressed, because they are burned out or whatever. So as an entrepreneur, I think it's very important to look after your health and after these kind of things and focus on, on improving this kind of, on that part of the spiral. So this is the bottom line that I also wanted to 
uh, share with you is that I think successful founders know why they do what they do, and they also have very clear, oh my god, that's a very bad idea to put uh, dark, uh, black, red on black. Do you see guys or not? Okay. So I think they have a uh, vision, very clear vision. They know we are going to do a cyberpunk uh, truck, or we're going to go to the Mars, or whatever. And then they have integrity, because without integrity, um, yeah, I mean, you can fake it, but at some point the reality will hit you and uh, you will uh, be hurt. Then you need to have a lot of energy, because Energy is uh, one of the core components of uh, why people do, why, why successful people are successful because they really take care of their energy and they know how to recharge. They, I will talk about these things in a bit, but they, the energy is super important. And then also the intrinsic motivation, last but not least. And always uh, successful entrepreneurs, I think, they do what they think and feel is right for them. I mean, if, uh, if Elon Musk was listening to all the people and uh, he was uh, following the guidance of, uh, okay, cyber, uh, the cyber truck is not gonna, uh, it's not nice, uh, we don't want it. He would never do it, but he did it and it's quite successful. And also I with Ford, if we I there is this very famous saying of uh, Ford saying that if I have asked my customers what they want, they would, ask, they would, they would tell me that they want faster horses, but instead I build cars. So it's very important that you know what you're doing because yeah, people sometimes are misleading, misleading you, they will mislead you or they will try to be nice with you and they will lie to you and that's how you will uh, go in the wrong path. Um, so, as I said, the most important why, the, the two most important things are the whys. To know as a person, your personal why, why you do things and then as a startup or as a company or as an employee to also know why you do these kind of things. Um, if you don't know them, I, I don't want to say I will guarantee that you're not going to be happy, but you'll be less happy if you know your personal why and your company why as a company. I will, I will elaborate a little bit more on, on, uh, on uh, the whys. Um, even if you're an employee in an IT company, if you're a developer, I think you need to know what, why you develop this code and what is the purpose of this, this IT company? Are they going for profit maxi maximization and extraction of value and making happy shareholders? Or you're actually making impact? So stuff like that. Very important things, the whys. Um, and then the question is, why do founders quit? I think many quit because they uh, burn their cash, because they get investments and they burn the cash, they get nice uh, salary and, um, and, uh, and what? An office and uh, the burn rate is, fast and is big. Uh, okay, so that's one of the reasons. But I, d I think this is not the, 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 the biggest reason. And then I also have heard and uh, they say that team is one of the most important components of every startup. So if you don't have a good team, then you have a high chance to uh, fail. But I think we, even without money and without team, you can continue if you are motivated. If you know that, okay, that's the first startup, we've learned, okay, now the second one, the third one, and then you can continue, 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 and it's a marathon. It's not something that, okay, two years exit and uh, we're uh, super rich. I mean, if that's your mission, I know people who have done it and that was their ec mission and they've done it, but yeah, it's, it's a thing. Um, so, yeah, I talk too much about this motivation, but what is motivation? Uh, I, I created a small formula, and it's the combination between uh, the vision of the startup, or the founder, or whoever, your vision, and then focus. Focus is important. Energy, and trust in the team. Oneness, so that you have a good team. Um, why motivation is important? Because true, if you are motivated, even if you fail, you will learn how to fail. And if you learn how to fail, you will learn how to succeed. Because the faster you fail, the faster you learn. The faster you learn, the faster you grow. And this leads to momentum. And momentum 
is nothing more than uh, nice articles in the newspaper or, or people talking about your startup and all these uh, things that are not real validation for what you do, but they make you happy and then make the people happy around you. But, and that might lead potentially to success. And what is success? I think it's just a bunch of failures. Come, yeah. So, yeah. Let me ask someone, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? Who are the entrepreneurs? Ah, no entrepreneurs now. <laughs> Who are the entrepreneurs? Why do you, what do you do? I uh, online. Sorry? Why do I do? No, are you an entrepreneur? Yeah. What do you do? I teach English online. IT? I teach English online. Oh, and why do you teach? Because I want to help others. Yeah, okay, clear. And why do you want to help others? Because if they speak better English, they can succeed more. Okay, and then what? Okay, so, okay, okay, business, nice. And who are the other entrepreneurs? No entrepreneurs? Why do you, what do you do and wh why do you do it? We are building a trading platform. Nice. Algorithmic trading. For? Algorithmic trading. Okay, so finance. Finance, yeah. Risk management. More like investment. Investment. For? Banks or for private? Hedge funds. Hedge funds, okay, yeah. nice, good customers with a lot of money. And why do you do that? How did you do that? Based on our experience and uh -huh. the connections that we had, we, we saw that there is something that we can do in, uh -huh. in this space. Yeah, and uh, okay, I have a sign from there. Let's continue later. Cool, cool. Thanks, thanks. Uh, so yeah, this is how you can also check yourself and to find out uh, why you do things and to ask yourself, okay, why I go to work every day? And the answer, and then question the why, the why, the why, the five whys, and then if you can dig deeper, then I think you'll be happier as an and more successful as an entrepreneur or as a hustler or designer or whatever. So you have a di direction. So that that's the bottom line here. Uh, how many of you know that? One, two, three. Ah, uh, Tudor, you haven't done a good job here, man. You need to put posters everywhere, you know, and. Uh, yeah, that's a very, very important uh, 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 thing. It's by Simon Sinek, and he talks about why you need to start communicating always with the why. And also, uh, when you start doing that, you are basically attacking the emotions of the people and not the rational side, and then you can be more persuasive and you can convince people and blah, blah. R get the book, uh, check his talk, and uh, definitely a, a a must uh, for anyone. I had a, I, I, I'll give a story. So my friend, uh, Alexander, he is a developer and engineer in uh, Copenhagen, and then he worked for a company for uh, five years. And then uh, we've met during the period when he was looking for the new job. And then I gave him the, the book of Simon Sinek. Uh, and then he says, I go to these interviews. And then I start, okay, I start with the question, what is your mission, what is your purpose to the, to the, inter to the, to the companies? And then he also uh, manages to, uh, to, to, talk, to start communicating with them, with the HR people, with the why. And they are basically throwing contracts ag against him because they understand that this guy knows his shit, basically. Um, my personal why, yeah, let me show you my personal why. To have tons of fun while gaining professional experience and knowledge from my startups so that I can facilitate, coordinate the digitalization of public safety and security institutions because I find that super exciting, as well as to provide support to other entrepreneurs so that they can reach their full potential because, and this way, this way I feel happy and helpful. So again, this is my thing. Uh, but uh, you can also do that, guys, basically. Uh, you, you, if you put uh, the two, the SOTAT, as well as, that's, not, that's optional. You can also create your personal why, or I would also show you how you can create your company why. And all of these slides will be, I think, distributed, and there will be a YouTube video, so you can check that later. Vision. I will let you to read this, because Tudor told me not to talk about that.
So we talked about these whys, and now I show you vision. Why? Because your why is your vision. And this is how you can basically raise money without market proof, with a good idea, with a best pitch. If you can pitch, if you can talk, you can convince people to give you money, tons of money. But that's also a bit tricky. I have a uh, different opinion about pitching and getting money from investors, but that's another story. But still, this is how you can raise money as a, as a starting startup or whatever, even with a PowerPoint presentation. Without proof of concept. And this is how you can also uh, form your company. Why? And then I'll change one, two, three. And then I'll talk about uh, energy because I showed you this, uh, this, uh, this equation that motivation equals the vision, the energy, the blah, 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 all the things. So and I'll talk about a bit about energy because uh, in my surrounding, many people, many entrepreneurs, starting entrepreneurs, they sometimes burn out or they sometimes have hard time waking up in the morning or they are not as energetic as they should be or as they can be. So two questions, what gives you energy or what gives people or me in general uh, energy and what drains uh, the energy? So I think these are some of the things I came up uh, that give me uh, energy. So walking, talking, breathing, sauna, spa, and podcast, books, I don't know. I don't know what are your things that you can used to get energy from. Uh, some people drink, do drugs, but I don't think that this, uh, these things gives you a lot of energy. I also do these kind of things, but this, this is, this is the, f the, the, the internal fight I have. Uh, but um, I have a question, but I'm not gonna ask it. So uh, how then, the question is, okay, we have energy, and then if we, if we have limited amount of time to achieve our goals with limited amount of energy. So how do we spend our energy in an optimal way so that we can achieve our goals in as faster or as quicker as possible? And then I think the most, the most important word here, oh my God, that's so bad, uh, is by working on exciting projects. So if you are working on very, very boring projects, I don't know, you're building landing pages and you're already a senior, I think that's not very exciting. Or you, if you are overqualified and you're working on something that is, does not require your, your set of skills, then it's not, not exciting. And that's why people, entrepreneurs, employees, whoever needs, I think, to do things that excite them. It's not always uh, possible because we live in the reality. Sometimes you need to do things, but I think it's very important to know what excites you because that, that way you can spend your energy in an optimal way. I will let you read these two uh, things. Any questions so far? No. Ask me questions. Who will be the first one? Is, it, is everything clear until now? OK. I see one nodding head. Two. Okay. OK. Question. Who will ask a question? No questions? No. That's, that's not very exciting. Uh, I have a question. Please. Yeah, that's why I do other business and, uh, consul and consulting job. Uh, but they are also quite exciting, to be honest. Did I answer your question? Partly. So I th if, I under if I hear you correctly, you say that how do I make money with the things that uh, excite me, right? Yes. Okay. Is excited maybe uh, uh, is excited about let's say something that has to do with 
funerals, but there are businesses that make money in that domain. So when I was doing the validation of, uh, of my second project, I was uh, in Eindhoven, I did a uh, shift with the firefighters. And then in the morning at 8 o'clock, they got me on the truck and then we went to this place where they burn people. How do you say that? I don't, I don't know. Uh, yes. And then I was like, fuck, you know, I've never been to these kind of things. I've never been to funeral. I, I don't know all these things. These are very uh, far from me. And then there was this guy, 20 something years old, with a suit and big smile. And he was like super excited to do his isn't job. He is, isn't he excited because his business has success, not because he actually likes crematory? Like uh, well his story, if I remember correctly, was that he started uh, just as a part-time job and something like that. But then he found out that ah, it's good. I like it. And that's how he helps people. And I don't know. But for example, what excites you? What Cooking. Do you like cooking? No. Karaoke. Karaoke. <laughs> Then, what do you work? Software development. Okay, so, are there karaoke in the city? Yes. How many? A big one and a couple of small ones. Okay, do you go there? Yes. And do you like them? Yeah, but they will be full. Yeah, exactly. So maybe you can make your own uh, karaoke, which is much better than the, the rest, and dominate them, and then ha that's how you will work on something exciting. And that's how you can be more happier than having a job as, I don't know if you're happy as, as a developer, I would say so-so. <coughs> so. I hope your boss is not watching, but, uh, or is not here, but uh, you see? So you can, and then you don't, I think you don't need to actually leave your job to start doing this. You can have your job, nine to five job, and then hustle after that, weekends, if you really, really want to do it. What, hire one place? and then make a karaoke and, uh, I don't know, just make it fun for other people to join. Yeah. Cool. More questions? <laughs> I'll tell you later. There is a camera and uh, they, they, they will be re that will be recorded. Uh, but I'll tell you later, we can talk about that. Uh, how to get the best uh, of your energy. I think uh, you, um, you get best of your energy if you are in a flow. I'll explain what is a flow, flow, and if you know how to recharge. And then you have the maximum energy output. So what is a flow? Flow is, I don't know if you uh, draw or do things that you really, really like, singing. Let's, uh, let's have the career, okay? And you sing for three hours, and then after three hours, you're like, oh, it's already one o'clock in the night. I need to go. This is a flow. This is when you lose track of uh, what you're doing. And this means that you're excited, that this means that you're passionate. If you lose track of, of uh, if you don't check every five minutes when it's gonna be five o'clock, then you're in a flow. But if you check at work um, every five minutes the time, then believe me, you're not in a flow. And this is the flow, the flow uh, diagram. So you have two things. One is the difficulty of the task that you are performing, and the other one is the skill. So I'll try to explain it uh, correctly and simply and quickly as possible because it's a bit confusing. So if you have a very uh, simple task and you're very skilled, you'll be bored. But if you are uh, performing a very difficult task and you don't have skill, you'll be anxious or something like that. You get it. But if your skills and difficulty match with the task, then you will be in a flow. Or if you're not in a flow, you can do deliberate practice. If you practice singing, then you will get better, and then you will enjoy more karaoke and so on. So on. The same with playing football, writing code, or whatever you want. Yeah. These are the things. So. And then how to best recharge? How do people, so we said, the maximum energy output is the combination between the, uh, help me, the recharging plus the flow, I think. And then how do we recharge? I think the best thing that people can do to recharge is to sleep or to do some other activities that help them 
um, help them relax uh, internally, not externally. I will explain the difference between external and internal relaxation. And why external relaxation, it's not a good thing, but internal relaxation, it's the best thing. Ta-da! External relaxation and external relaxation. As I said, drugs, alcohol, um, cigarettes. I also smoke sometimes. Uh, all of these things, movies, Netflix, uh, all of these stimulus, this is external relaxation. And this is uh, not actually uh, a relaxation. You teach your brain to, uh, stimu you stimulate your brain. You get addicted to Netflix, to YouTube, and to all of these things that actually do not always help you if you do them way too for, for a long time. So what I say is that if you want to relax internally, you need to sleep, you need to eat, you need to do fun things with friends, go to nature, do sauna, I don't know, the things that do not, does not uh, harm you as a, as a person. This is very important. And as a successful founder, you need to have a very, I think, if you want to be on the top of the league, because if, if you're gonna do marathons, if you're gonna be an athlete, you really need to uh, be on the top of your game. The same with athletes or, or anything. It's not easy. Don't, don't get me wrong, I don't do it, always. I try, I try. Yes, and being on is a huge problem and in long term can lead to burnout. And mental health is a huge issue. I don't know how it's here in Eastern Europe, also in Bulgaria, we don't believe in burnouts. But in the Netherlands, almost every second, third, five, fifth person is burned out. But uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a real thing also here. I think some people just don't realize that uh, they're burned out. Um, so how do we notice when, when as entrepreneurs, we, let's say, um, use this external uh, relaxation and this stimulus to relax, and how do we understand that we as people need to change something in order to perform better. I think it's when you notice a couple of things. When you uh, notice a destructive behavior, overeating, drinking, coffees, and all these things. And this is when you know that you, can, you have to slow down because it's a marathon. It's not something that you can uh, go through it. It's not a sprint of eight weeks and then ta-da. I think also when you're grumpy, when you're not happy, when you're not excited, when you don't have energy, when you don't want to do anything, when you wake up with alarm. Maybe. Some people don't wake up with alarms. Maybe because they're in a flow. Who knows? And also, before the end, I want to share also one uh, thing about focus. And the definition I have uh, in as for focus is to follow one course of action until success. Because if you don't have one course of action, if you n don't know that you want to win this, uh, let's say, game, you can be distracted from different things and then you lose your energy, your, uh, your motivation, and so on. So this is another important thing that I want to share with you. And then that's going to be the conclusion. I'm not I will stop talking in 30 seconds. And then you can start asking questions, hopefully. But what I want to say is that entrepreneurship is not a solo sprint. It's a team, team sport. It's a marathon where smart work outperforms hard work and where endurance and motivation trumps everything else. Capital, connections. You can build these kind of things. But if you're not motivated to endure, then uh, things can't happen. And I think that's it. Thank you.